is a Bramble Jam podcast. Hi, I'm Bran, and I love uh, Killer Cheerleader Lifetime movies. I'm Dan. I actually don't know how I feel about Killer Cheerleader <laughs> Lifetime movies. And I am Patrick, and I am a Lifetime movie expert. And, and this, this is the Deck of the Lifetime Uncorked. <laughs> It's like a combo oh, of yeah. songs. Yeah, you hit us with that remix. Is what it's you a did. remix wow. of the Deck the Hallmark and mm. Lifetime Court. That's so, I think what everybody's been asking People for. People have been clamoring for it. They've been like, hey, guys, is there any way you could get a remix to Deck the Hallmark? Yeah. <laughs> the theme song. That's what's happened. And I thought you guys already remixed it because I remember the old, old theme yeah, yeah, song from back in the day. And that's I was true. like, oh, this Deck the Hallmark is this podcast. Yeah, uh-huh. it is a yeah, yeah it yeah. is a remix of a remix. It's so it's a triple with, remix. Yeah, it was Reliant K and then there was copyright issues with the YouTube. Yes. And so we switched it again, yeah, is yeah, what yeah, happened yeah, yeah. basically. But nice. now you it's know, layered. It's yeah. layered. I love it. It's like um who's a good remixer? <laughs> Uh, um, Skrillex? Does Skrillex still do things <laughs> these days? I love that you just went to Skrillex. Like, right, that was quick. Right. That was a quick, that quick pop. That was quick. I guess he's the <laughs> the top remixer <laughs> in the world. You heard it here first, everyone. I genuinely don't know if Skrillex is still up to things, <laughs> I but I remember him from a while ago. Good. That's How good do you for forget you. the Skrillex? You can't. You, can't. you can't. You wouldn't. Very excited about today. Oh, my goodness. Um, a, a special thing we're calling Deck the Lifetime Uncorked, which I'm very excited about because Are you excited about I'm it, very excited it about it. I'm very wow. excited about it because it is, uh, I don't I think a combination of a lot of uh, magical things. And so it, it can't, it like, it, it can't be worse. No. Right. But also like for those of you out there that listen to our podcast and maybe found us because of Patrick's wonderful podcast, Lifetime Uncorked. Right. And you're like, man, I need more Lifetime Uncorked in my life. Would join the club first of all because it's just the best. But second of all, this is a great opportunity for us to get to be a part of it, which I couldn't be more actually excited about. I'm not saying it because I don't know another word. I'm actually excited about. Well, it. I'm thrilled, <laughs> um, Patrick. Yes. I I want you to catch everybody up to speed because it's been quite the year in the lifetime mm-hmm. uncorked uh, camp, if you will. Uh, so catch everybody up to speed and how we ended up uh, here at this moment in history. Right. So, I mean, you all remember when we did our cross episodes in the very beginning, I was in a preview episode of Death the Hallmark. Yeah. You guys came on and did, um, I think it was like her husband's secret life or husband's secret wife that or right. something. Yeah, that checks out. All, all I know is there was a horse statue and <laughs> things got weird. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've been like buddies ever since and kind of just doing our things. And then Lifetime on Court took a hiatus last year because our producer drew had a stroke which is such a bummer but hey he's with us here today he's rocking it um he's in recovery and doing well um but obviously he can't do the podcast anymore so i reached out to brand and i was like hey what's up let's uh collaborate and see what's going on and here we are that's right. We are the damn thing. That's, That's right. right. And if you know, if you like it, let us know. Maybe we'll do more of these. But as of right now, this is just a one-off fun fun of Palooza. That's right. Um, and here's the thing: no, no one can fill the shoes of Drew. No he, way. He's too perfect. He's just hysterical. But but if anybody uh, can even get in the ballpark, it's my good friend Dan. Because Dan hates the movies. Mm. He doesn't want to watch these. And yeah. so to give, to, uh, when I told him this idea, hey, you get to not watch the movies. I'm in. That was the, just, all the selling I needed. That, that was it. Yeah. Um, so Patrick, tell everybody, catch everybody up to speed about how the, the format of Lifetime Uncorked uh, works and what we'll be doing here today. Right. So that's the beauty of this. Dan doesn't have to watch the movie. Oh, so man. we love that. And basically, um, me and Bran are going to recap the movie to Dan, and he's going to use his imagination along with you, the listeners, who don't have to watch the movie either. We watch these movies so you don't have to. That is the point of the <laughs> podcast. You guys are watching Hallmark movies, most likely, and you're like, I don't want to watch this cheerleader murder movie. <laughs> but you know what? I'd like to hear about it and see just to keep my tabs on what lifetime is doing i'd like to know that's mm. the purpose of the show right that sounds right. like a better show than our show well, i'm just yeah. gonna be honest <laughs> and then at the end we'll tell we'll tell the listeners whether or not we're gonna we're gonna pour it up or yeah, uh, pour it or up pour means it means yes yes pour it 
pour it up means yes. Put a cork in it means no, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and, yes, it's wine related because, you know, I drink wine when I watch these movies. I drink wine when I record my podcast normally, but today we're in the middle of the day, so I'm drinking hey, coffee. Yeah, quitters never win, Pat. <laughs> it's five o'clock somewhere, man. That's right. All right. I'll, I'll get my special, uh, my tumbler that has like a, you know, this is my my hallmark drinking whatever yeah, what yeah. percent you know. of lifetime viewers that watch lifetime movies live are not drinking wine do you think oh god people who watch them live are are a certain type of people because i live tweet these movies and i'm like y'all are crazy so um yeah usually lifetime something you do while you're uh you have on while you're doing laundry yeah. it's something you have on while you're making dinner you're not giving it your full attention and if you were you might find some plot holes no no, no i don't, I don't believe so. that for a second um the movie that we're doing today is killer cheer mom and Patrick was kind enough to explain to me that this is not the only cheerleading movie that's going on right now. <laughs> this is a series of cheerleader uh, killer movies, correct? Yes, it's called, um, what are we calling it now? I think it's called Fear the Cheer is the series. <laughs> and it's back to school, of course. So yeah. we have to get the the cheerleader uh, murder movies in. It's cheerleader murder movie season. Big, big uh, season over at Lifetime. And, you know, they do like homecoming ones around homecoming. But this is like their bread and butter. This is uh, old school. Like think back to Tori Spelling, mm. Kelly Martin, the original cheerleader murders um based on a true story the, i think that's a friend to die for but yes yeah, so we always get a good a uh, good bunch of cheerleader murder movies this one today killer cheer mom stars our girl denise richards yeah. oh wow icon legend yeah from yes, wild Beauty. things right yeah yeah man they're that denise good. richards it's, unbelievable it's, it was a big get i think i don't know i love that we're yeah this is clearly a golden era movie we're dealing <laughs> with but i love that we're not dipping our toe there's not like a a gateway lifetime film we're just getting right to the murdering cheerleaders like that is that's how you do it in my opinion yeah yeah and the director of the movie guys is actually a friend of rachel's from the hallmarkies podcast oh, so, oh wow uh, his name's randy carter he co-hosts one of her uh, side podcast so we like basically our family with these people we know them already so w anything we say today is all in good fun you know yeah, absolutely no, of course. absolutely um and dan you you I'll, I'll let you take it away here patrick but if you thought that the, the like the the genre of the movie wasn't uh you know like dipping our toe like we were going head first it starts off with a bang this movie does it really starts off with hey here we go we're doing this thing <laughs> so patrick i'll let you steer the ship here but okay. I just want I want people to know, Lifetime's not playing around. It's not like in a Hallmark where it starts with like five minutes of leaf shots, you know? Like, Lifetime's going to get down to business Is the quickly. plot somehow less important, like from a standpoint of talking it through, than Hallmark is? <sighs> mm, the plot is... <laughs> The plot is something. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> it's always like a mystery. It's yeah. always like going to give you something. You might know where it's going. And I was, that's kind of the fun of it. There's more action than in a Hallmark mystery. Oh, movie. of course. There's, yeah. some, there's serious stuff going on here. So, Patrick, take it away. Yeah. So, okay. Basically, we have our cheerleader, our killer cheer mom, which are Denise Richards, Thomas Calibro, Courtney Fock and JJ Warren. Oh, you can't you say that on this show. Denise Richards. Uh, Courtney, calm down. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? Um, <laughs> okay, yes. Uh, now I'm like blushing. You guys have made me um, yeah. so blush. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, I just like to say the stars at the top so they know we know who they are. But usually in Lifetime, you don't know who anybody is. So that's it's not like you guys uh, at Hallmark, you have like your stable of people. Mm -hmm. These people are coming in and out. It's a it's like, uh, thanks for your service. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, great. <laughs> sure. um, so the movie starts off. We have two blondes and we don't see their faces, really. We just see like uh, two blondes. One's tied up. The other one is like dumping gasoline all over the <laughs> other blonde. OK, and you know you're like wow that's intense this is typical for a lifetime movie uh, i just got to tell you because there's another movie with a uh, pain vega sister one of the um i forget not alexis pain vega there's another one oh sure. and she wow gets, she dumps gasoline all over herself and lights herself on fire and that's how the movie starts <laughs> so, I, <what>? yeah <laughs> what she, she's also, 
<laughs> she's also a cheerleader in that movie. So Lifetime really goes there. Okay? I just, I can't, like, there are so many things that I can imagine happening to me. One of them does not involve gasoline being poured on me. Like, that's way down on the list of ways I assume somebody would kill me. <laughs> yeah, pouring it on yourself. Yes. I'm a little more... Alexis Peña Vega has a sister that also has the last name Peña Vega. No, I, it's probably just the Vega, right? It's or just the probably one of Peña. Which who is she? I don't know. When you get you guys, when you get married and you're in a lifetime movie, you take the more famous name. So okay. you just add on the Peña. Vega. I got you. Just add the Peña Vega. Okay, go go go. I just that's right. It's like Hillary. It's like Hillary and Haley Duff. You know, they 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 keep the Duff. Yes. Whatever they're getting married, they keep the Duff. H Anyways, Duff. Anyways, um. <laughs> you know, Lifetime likes to start with this thing where they start with like the end of the movie at the beginning of the movie to give you a teaser as to what's going to happen. Ooh, it's good. It's and, good story and then telling. we flash we flash back to a week before. So now we will see how we get to the gasoline blondes in the with the movie. Okay. I saw gasoline That's blondes live. I yeah, did. They were, they were wonderful. Good band. Good really band. good band. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> that is a great band name, actually. Yeah, we need to make that happen. We're all we're all brunettes here, but right. I think we could get some hair dye and really get something started. Oh, I mean, sure. if you're so, in. we cut to we cut to uh, lifetime pop music, which is just generic, um, like Jesse J. Like if you can imagine, like very nondescript girl singing mm -hmm. happy music, and we get a lengthy cheerleader routine, which involves no cheerleading and no tumbling, just uh, like pom poms yeah. and like hip hip swaying. Okay, back in very my day, simple. back in my day, we if you weren't flying, you weren't you weren't cheering. Like we, you would throw people up in the air, and that's how you show. Listen, off. Mr. Five A Public School. That's like right. we all didn't grow up with like all of that talent, right? Like throwing yes. people in the air. Somebody at a school my size, somebody was going to get hurt if you yeah. did that. Well, <laughs> people did get hurt. That was part of the fun. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there you go. Yes, yeah, so you got to do a basket toss. You got to do a herky in there. You got to get all your moves in. But mm. a herky when you jump up and you put your legs up to the side. Oh, that's what thing. that's called. I learned something new today. It is. Man. You know, I'm here with the useless information. <laughs> so if you ever needed anything that you didn't want to know about, that's gay, gay-ish. That's me. <laughs> okay. Um. So, you know, the, the um, cheerleaders are doing like the pep rally and we meet Riley. She's our protagonist. Mm -hmm. She's a, the, a blonde, which makes us think she might be a gasoline blonde at the end. And she's being shown around by the, the she's new to school. She's being shown by this girl, Blair. And Blair's like, oh, wow, you really seem to like cheerleading a lot. And Riley's like, yeah, I might try out. I might try it out. I don't know. <laughs> The like, way that like Blair knows, though, that Riley is very in is because the way that Riley's watching this cheerleading routine is with a little, she's got a weird smirk on her face. I thought there was going to be something going on. Like she was, I thought maybe she was going to kill somebody. Like she was very locked in with a smirk, like a, a little devilish smirk. Uh, yeah. So she might try yes. out for a team that already exists. The team does exist, but it's like the it's the first day of school, I think, and so they're trying to get people to try out. So it's like, to hey, join what we got exists. we got I some got slots open. Come on. I got you. Okay. All right, right. Cool, cool. There's three three slots open, very specific number. Um, but not important really. Riley uh, leaves the pep rally and is walking around the halls. She bumps into a greasy haired teen named Cooper or Connor. I couldn't remember. Um, it's Cooper. It's a Pena Vega situation. It, it, Does it matter? It's Cooper so. Connor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Cooper Connor and they they like bump into each other and like she puts on his headphones and she's like ooh rock music yes <laughs> and they're gonna fall in love so we know that's happening right away mm. doesn't really matter to the plot at all Dan so don't get too caught up on that the love story doesn't um, matter to the plot got it not in a lifetime movie not the, in a the, lifetime the movie. rock music though does and it's it's great great generic rock better all than the generic Jesse J that we have going on well no right. <laughs> Lifetime doesn't have the budget for music, period. Yeah, public domain. They spend all their money on, yeah, they yeah. do not, like, they did the Britney Spears biopic and had no Britney Spears music in it at all. So <laughs> that is, that is a feat right there. <laughs> That's impressive. Right. Did they at least have like something that kind of sounds like toxic? Like if you like squint, it's like, that's similar right. enough. Yeah, exactly. Don't it's get like, us sued, you know, but, you know, play it enough to where we think it is the thing. Yeah. Right? Instead of toxic, she performed her 
number one hit, Poison, and uh, it was great. <laughs> You're poison. <laughs> You're poison. I'm <laughs> slipping. Uh, the 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 thing is, is you can't have music because you got to back up the Brinks truck for Denise Richards, right? Like you can't. How there much money go. could possibly left over? Denise Richards commands a salary. You got to you got to pay her something, right? Absolutely. And speaking of Denise Richards, she shows up at the school and she's like, hey, Riley, it's me, your stepmom. And the stepmom's name's Amanda, but we're just going to call her Denise Richards for the, the duration of this recap. Um, and she's like, Riley, would you like to go get Froyo? And I'm like, Froyo is so specific. And like Froyo is a brand, right? I don't know. Is like, it? Froyo paid for that. To oh be wow! In there, yeah. I don't. I don't know, but I do know it's something that you don't say if you're trying to get in good with your new stepdaughter. Mm -mm. You don't say froyo in yeah. front of all the friends. There's not a decade where that works out well for you. I don't Fro froyo. You want to go get some froyo? <laughs> Yeah, and she's got that Midwestern thing going on, Denise Richards. She's, like, leaning into that hard in this movie. So, she, you know, she I can't do a Midwestern accent, but she's got that going on. So just picture that, Dan. The she's, Midwestern she's got accent range. Is Richard, strong. Richards has range. I've said it for years. It's a Richards range. It's, uh, yeah, it's a known fact. So um, <laughs> Riley is very embarrassed, and her father is even more embarrassing. This guy, Dan, okay, think, like, what Joe Pesci think like <laughs> Joe Pesci but taller and he's like hey my daughter I heard you're trying out for cheerleading you're cool rah 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 it is the most insane father daughter scene I've seen on a lifetime movie in a long time it was yes, crazy he was a kooky fellow full my cousin Vinny yeah he was uh <laughs> he was something special well that maybe produces the offspring that would smirk at a cheerleading routine yeah maybe potentially yeah uh, that man's name is Thomas Cal Calibro, and I just want to say, Thomas, you're killing it. So <laughs> you just keep doing you, man. That I, was, I need more like, Thomas in so my great. life. Yeah, I want to see his spinoff, okay? <laughs> um, but basically, he's like, I know, daughter, that you hate this new town we're in. We're originally from Chicago, and, you know, you hate Denise Richards. But, like, give it a shot. Give it a shot. And then around the corner, you see Denise Richards listening to the conversation yeah she's very much oh, in boy. that life yep Oof. so eve eavesdropping eavesdropping or eavesdropping how do you e say it's that e word? eavesdropping eaves yeah i think <laughs> okay like uh it's christmas eve yes yeah like exactly, that exactly drop like it <laughs> and it's like eavesdropping is <laughs> like her go. her full-time job in this movie she like she always knows where a corner is because she's going to be behind it. Like, it's, that's just what she does. It's, it's where she's made her house. It's almost like Lifetime is trying to give step parents a bad name. <laughs> no. You know, <laughs> you know. So, yes, Denise Richards is going to win the award for best uh, corner snooping person. Okay. Yeah. She shows up, Denise does, at the cheerleading tryouts and, like, is given thumbs up to her her daughter who's, like, trying out and is terrible. Bad. She's a very bad cheerleader. Like, the worst one. Worse than so the this classic her... palms and sway? Like She, worse than she that? doesn't know how to do it. Like, she's just like, they're like, here's four moves, four steps, arm, down, up here. I believe that's what it was, right? Like, it's just like, arm to the side, down, I mean, both arms, up. And Brent, she couldn't Brent, get it. You just made the, you made the team. I made the team. You, You're on the squad, buddy. You made the team. She couldn't get it. Um, wow. She couldn't get it. And Denise is like, ooh, I got my work cut out for me. So she goes down and talks to the coach. And this coach, can I just say, is so sassy. Like, she's got a clipboard. And she's like, no, that's not good enough. That's not going to make the team. Like, she's <laughs> the type of coach you want. The no-nonsense coach. Yeah. I appreciate that. I appreciate that in a coach. Yeah. That I'm will push you to go harder, right? You're not going to be able to do the Hurleys or whatever they were called. Hinky, without, Herkies. Uh, Herkies, Herkies without, Herkies. without this type of coach. The co this coach is going to get them to Herky status. <laughs> I think so. I think so. But yeah, I just wanted to say that coach was pretty good. And she's like not having any of, of Denise Richards, right? She's like, I'm the coach. You're the stepmom. Like, back off. Leave me alone, <laughs> right. basically. She goes around a corner so, to hide. Yeah. She, <laughs> yeah. Denise, she, Denise she, hides she under the, goes under the bleachers and just kind of sits down for a while. She really does. She she like is thinking of ways to like uh in uh incorporate herself into the school. So she joins the PTA, she brings cookies, 
she like uh goes into an office and like looks at medical records of the students like she's gonna like wait a minute well wait, 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 it, it isn't it's important to note here that they recently moved from Chicago. That's why they're at this new place. And uh, yeah. Riley, the girl, right? That's her name. She doesn't want to be yes. there. She's like, dad, I don't want to go there. And dad's like, hey, just let's try it out. And if you end up liking it, then we can stay. And if not, we'll talk about going home. So when when uh, the, uh, little uh, Denise Richards over here catches wind of this, she is clearly very upset about the idea of going back to Chicago, but we don't know why. Okay. And so she's she, getting very involved in her life, trying to help her. I get life. you, but we just took a huge giant leap from joining the PTA, making cookies to breaking in and looking at medical records. Yeah. Well, right? we'll, we'll like, get to that's more That's not normal. Of that. <laughs> oh yeah. Definitely not normal. And definitely like, you know, Denise Richards is using her corner sneakiness and like her general good looks to get what she wants. Right. That's what lifetime of, uh, like fade femme fatales do right they use their looks they're like hello yes let me just flirt with this man really quick and i will get what i want <laughs> so she's gonna use the records to um i guess get this girl d kicked off the squad because she didn't i don't know d kicked off like gets her to make the team riley so or a different so girl? so the here's the thing there's uh some girls if you've made if you were already on the team you're on the team so there's only those few slots when she realizes how bad her stepdaughter is she's like i gotta make yeah. room more room i gotta make more room for her so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ruin this girl's life by getting yes. her records, her medical records, and, like, lying on them. Like, I'm going to act wow. like I'm the doctor. I think she says she has asthma and, uh, can't, like, can't asthma, sign off on it. her being on the squad or whatever. But isn't this a simple fix? The girl just goes, that's not true. I don't have asthma. Yes, Dan, you're correct. It she did do that, so I don't know what happens to that girl, but basically she's she's out. Basically she's out. She says, like, no, my doctor said, and they're like, too bad. Your form says asthma. You're out of here, basically. Ironclad. Um, form says asthma. I don't know what you want. Ironclad. <laughs> so Denise Richards is like, okay, the check mark. Uh, now I'm going to go to my next victim. So she goes back to Chicago. She's been drinking wine and ignoring calls from her therapist. This is where Lifetime gets a little problematic, right? What? This they is don't where? Men, men, <laughs> right. Oh, you're right. There's been the, so many things. The like, you flirting <laughs> to get in and destroy medical records above board. But now, now we're getting in the shady, now, seedy part of the Now we're crossing right? the line. Right. Now we're crossing the line. <laughs> Um, you know, they don't depict people with mental health issues well. So she is like going to her therapist to kind of do the same thing, like flirt with her therapist to steal his prescription pad. <laughs> and then she's going to take the prescription pad, write a fake, a fake script on there and then plant the drugs on another girl named Ariel. Standard. That's her plan too. Classic. She also gets her records from him. And I don't really know if the only purpose of getting the records was so that he would leave the room. But she does get her own records, which is an interesting thing that she does. But yes, yeah, she I, also yeah. steals a prescription note wow. and writes her own prescription to plant on a teenage. I mean, she's girl. really going hard on the medical route. There's a lot of ways to get kids kicked off a team, but she is really saying the medical route is the route, the, a path of apparently least resistance somehow. Right. Well, and don't worry, Dan, because. She's going to double down on these two girls. If, yeah. if them getting kicked off the team wasn't enough, oh, no. she's also going to get them suspended from school, completely taken away from school and ruin their lives. She is the most tech savvy mom in a lifetime movie we have ever had. Wow. She um, goes on her laptop. She searches on not Google search. It's just called search, but Sorry. the colors are still Google. Classic search. <laughs> I love it's search. a real Britney Spears can't use her music situation. <laughs> Poison. Yes. Right, poison. She she uh, looks up a video of of cheerleaders drinking. They're like, cheers, um, cheers, girl. <laughs> I was gonna say something else, but I, I said, cheers, girl. You know, they're toasting their beers, and then um, that's what cheerleaders do, right? Cheer, uh, cheers, girl. Cheers, girl. <laughs> cheers, girl. So um, yeah, then she face swaps out the pictures. So she takes the, the faces of these two girls that she wants out of there. She puts them on the, the video and then circulates the video around the school and they get suspended. I just want to make this clear. She uses a website called Swap Face. 
to import a video. It's not just a picture face swap. This isn't like just something you can just, you know, do. Click it. It's not like a this Travolta is cage an, uh, This is an AI video face swap website where she imports multiple mm -hmm. videos and then the two pictures. And then over the course of, I believe it says it was going to render for seven hours or something like that at the <laughs> end, which yeah. I was like, you know what? It probably would. So thank you for but trying. If, it had, if we have the technology to do this, it wouldn't take like... Seven hours. It's hard to say, man. AI waits for no one. So it, Jimmy Fallon used to have a bit called Head Swap. Yeah. This Kinda is like just that. Real life head swap. Real life. But it's gonna look yeah. it's it's gonna look like it's what they call on the internet a, a deep fake, I believe. Is that is that the terminology? Deep fake. Sure, yeah. It's like um you know, Gollum from like Lord of the Rings, like how they had all those dots on yeah. his face. Like it's kinda like that. Like that high tech technology that Denise Richards knows all about. Yeah, of yeah. course she does. She's got plenty of time on her hands. Just doesn't want to go back to Chicago. Don't don't make me go back to Chicago. But she does this because she realizes the you know the doctor's note thing was going to get found out that it wasn't going to be true and uh. then like the prescription drugs they're going to re research that and so she doubles down on this like she's like i should have started here yeah to be to be fair i should have started here with a deep fake if you're that tech savvy uh, face that's swap. where you should start forget but the medical she, you, stuff you got to get them out of it you got to you got to make sure they're out <laughs> yeah exactly so she she's got so that they're out like it's looking good for riley right she's like Pretty good. So Denise uh, Richards opened up about her past relationship. She starts like bonding with Riley on like a personal level, like an actual human being. And she kind of talks about her past where she was dating some guy or something and he killed himself. I don't really know. It's not important to the plot, but I just wanted to talk about <laughs> Denise Richards acting dramatically. <laughs> um, you know, so like in Dan full midwestern picture. accent right <laughs> right yeah oh man i wish i could do it i wish i could do it in, you're in but chicago I patrick I, uh, you hear it every day come on give me something i know i'm like oh don't you know that uh my boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> died uh in suicide huh Whatever. yeah <laughs> yeah oh well, yeah eh? call okay it, call um, it quick no, so. but didn't the Denise actor, the De Denise Richards acting here is like, you know, the visine on the eyes, the typical lifetime, like oh. I'm Botox to death and, you know, nothing against Botox or uh, any plastic surgery. I have Botox Thank right you. now. Look how smooth my forehead is. Okay. okay. Um, I'm, Fantastic. Just, I'm just saying what it is it, in a lifetime movie. That's what you do. You just get the little drops and you drop your eyes and you make yourself look like you're crying. And then you say the sad thing. And yeah. that's what's happening here. Now, this is true. Patrick is going to be in a Lifetime movie at some point here in the future. It's already been filmed, right? Oh, wow. I don't know if I'm allowed to say oh, this on the air. but Oh, yes. Um, no, it's allowed. Uh, yes, I am not only a Lifetime expert, I'm also a Lifetime star. Yeah. Um, but they made you <laughs> get Botox beforehand. They said, like, we love you, we want you, but please, for mm -hmm. the sake of the craft, Botox. Wow. Right. Yeah, they... It was it was in my contract. I had to get Botox. Yeah, unbelievable. So, that's lifetime for you. Lifetime's not messing around. No, they don't. They don't want you to have a wrinkle on your face. <laughs> I can't wait till and the they people... hired Denise. Ri like Denise Richards, no wrinkles on her face yet. She's well, no. she's been Botox I mean, pretty uh, pretty heavily. Yeah, she looks she, she looks good. She, she looks good. She has a good guy. She looks good. She looks pretty much the same. Wow. As okay. You remember, her, you know. Um. Okay. So. Denise Richards is like being really paranoid because uh, Riley is spending a lot of time with the captain of the cheerleading squad, Chloe, mm. another blonde. We're getting a lot of blondes going here and I'm starting to get nervous because I know the gasoline blondes are coming right. and a lot I, of blonde herring getting there. Around. Now it is a somewhat <laughs> of important. Yeah, yes. yeah. It is of somewhat important uh, note that Cooper Connor and a cheerleader captain are brother and sister. Oh, okay. So they're All kind right. they're they're you know they're so Riley and Cooper Connor falling in love. Cooper Connor Riley, Riley and uh Cooper Connor's sister, cheerleader captain, becoming friends. Okay. So they're all, right. all they're all together. Gotcha. Yeah. And unlike Bring It On, the siblings <laughs> don't have the same hair color, so I'm very confused. No, they're not you even know? close. Not even close. Yeah. If we like, can only aspire Elijah to the standard. Just not here. <laughs> yeah. Bring it, bring it on. It's like the best cheerleader movie ever. Uh, Killer Cheer Mom. Uh, I don't know where it falls in line, but it's not at the top. Okay. <laughs> Fair. So, <laughs> so Chloe, the cheerleading captain, she is getting kind of too close to Riley and 
for some reason that makes Denise Richards un unsettled. I don't she, know why. You you think I it don't. would be good news? Like, hey, maybe if you get in good with the captain, you'll get a better chance of being on the squad. But she's not happy. Yeah. She hates this girl. She like actively is like, this girl is the worst. So she invites her in for a smoothie. And Dan, you won't know this. In a Lifetime movie, drinking anything is bad. <laughs> drinking anything is, is terrible. You never, ever drink anything. They could be, they could be uh, getting your fingerprints. They could be poisoning you. You could be getting roofied. Or it could just be like a not good drink. It could be like gross. <laughs> All of the possibilities. A good drink is such a small chance that it, that that you just stay away. I, I, I see. Right. No, I'm getting the idea. No, that makes so sense. If you're, in, if you're in a Lifetime movie, avoid all drinks. Yeah, fair. Um, Taking notes. So, yes, the, the uh, girl, Chloe, does not avoid the drinks. She actually drinks it in her car while she's driving, mm -hmm. which is another Lifetime no-no. Don't drive in a Lifetime movie because you <laughs> end up in an accident, which, of course, she does. Her brakes are cut. She's poisoned. Also, for good measure, she runs the car into a telephone pole and is unconscious for the rest of the movie. Well, almost the rest of the movie. Yeah. But I will say, uh, of the ways that she could have crashed going down this hill, probably the best case scenario for this car. <laughs> because not only does she like not like you know fly off a cliff or hit a rock or something head on, she, her car... Uh, goes and does a full 180, and so the pole slams into the passenger door. So really, obviously, she's hurt. We are mourning for her, but she's not dead, and um, really best-case scenario for the car, I think. So at what right. point does Denise Richards' motivation go from my girl's got to make the cheer cheerleading squad to I just I freaking hate cheerleaders. <laughs> Like, at what point does that happen? Do we get a, a hard cut there where that, like, becomes a thing, or are we just supposed to roll with it? There's no rhyme or reason here. <laughs> like, there's nothing that happened to her with this girl that made her go extra hard on her okay. and, like, double down, cut her brakes, and poison her. Yeah. The, I, I don't the only thing I can figure is she, uh, cheerleader captain girl, was talking about how she's going to try to prove that the video is fake. And like try to make her friends uh, all all on the up uh, and up, you know. Yeah. So she, she, of course, is listening. Denise Richards is around the corner. She's peeking in and listening. So she hears that, and I think that's like there, she's gonna get too close to the case or something. I don't know. <laughs> but what she forgets is th sense. that sense. that you know, this is a teenage girl. Like, what's this teenage she girl got? Face swap. She doesn't know how to face swap. She, she, doesn't, know how to do it. she doesn't know how to prove that it is yeah. a face swap. So I don't know. But she, so she goes straight from hearing that to cutting breaks. She which, goes from let me flirt with a guy to get medical records to what if we killed a girl? <laughs> what if we did that? Let's try that out. See what, what happens. It, yeah, and it, it doesn't work. But everyone now blames Riley because they think that Riley is killing Chloe or trying to take uh, Chloe out to get her spot on the team, even though she's basically the only person left uh, trying out for the squad at this yeah. point, you know? Yeah. But it ruins Riley's reputation. She's like, I have to clear my name. Even she Cooper a, Connor. A search. Even Cooper Connor's not, oh, yeah. not, not on board with her anymore. Oh, no. Yeah. Man. I know. Falling out. I know. Yeah, so Riley goes to like clear her name. She asks her her best friend Bailey, who has somehow survived this movie because usually the friends die like right away. Um, she survived, and she's like, Bailey, do you want to go to Chicago with me and look um, for some clues about Denise Richards? And Bailey's like, I'm good. I don't need to do that. No, thank you. And I'm like, that is the most real thing to ever happen in a lifetime movie. I just loved Bailey. I'm like, yes, you tell her no. That is a stupid idea. Bailey so used, I think, a, a robot competition as an excuse not to go, which I think is great. Bailey's playing her cards hey. close to the best. She realizes that she's made it longer than she's supposed to. And so she's just like, I'm not gonna go. I can't, it's not the risk, it just out just outweighs the reward by a mile. So it's a no for me. Love you, but it's a no. I like that. I respect Bailey. I'm yeah. on board. Yeah. Set your boundaries. <laughs> Everyone should uh, should know their boundaries and speak them. So, you know, Bailey did that, and I'm proud of her. <laughs> so Cooper Connor, of course, ends up going in her place. They find the um, ex-wife of the guy who Denise Richards, like, had 
was telling the sad story about and that wife is like oh yeah denise richards is crazy stay away from her yeah. oh and by the way when she was uh living in chicago her name was mallory and she's very dangerous <laughs> and you're like okay okay great bt um, dubs <laughs> yeah it's just kind of like that exposition character at the end yeah. of a lifetime plot, movie plot, to kinda, plot, plot, plot. yeah yeah so not really important in a hallmark movie this person would be in the beginning beginning like, of the you movie are this 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 yeah. yes yes All the, no, this happens at the end of the movie by like the sister of somebody or whatever. Gotcha. All right. Always All a random making character. sense now. And, yep. And if I were to be in a Lifetime movie again, this would be like the goal role for me. I'd be like, <laughs> I want to be this random person that doesn't matter to anything in the movie. I want to be that. Love it. Um. So, so then they go talk to the therapist and the therapist is like, you know what? I noticed that my um, script pad is missing. Um. So yeah, I think you guys are in trouble. And they leave the office. And of course, Denise Richards is there. She knocks out Connor Cooper and then she drags away Riley in broad daylight. So <laughs> we're not, getting towards it's, the it's, end. It's of not the movie. good. It's not good because <laughs> li the last thing, listen, we're all worried about uh, Riley here. But this is in Chicago. She drags her away in broad daylight. Yeah, I think hey, so. It happens all the time. So yeah. Being a Chicagoan, yeah. I just need to tell you guys that, <laughs> that that happens every day. Okay. But the bad news is, is her and Cooper Connor had just gotten there. That you know what, Cooper Connor was convinced at this point. Hey, the girl I like didn't try to kill my sister. So like, I was happy for them, and then suddenly, uh oh, now they're knocked out, and uh, and that made me hurt as a as a person who was cheering for Cooper Connor. Of course. Well, well, right, and and you're not used to the scary, the scary lifetime life. No, you know? like, it was very scary, very scary. So scary. <laughs> Uh, you guys, I actually am like afraid of like really stupid things. Like growing up, like Grover was the scariest thing to me. Grover, the, the was, Sesame Street Muppet, Go Grover. Yes, Grover would like <laughs> scare me so bad. My mom had to call Grover's mom and be like, "Grover, you are not allowed to come <laughs> over to Patrick's house anymore." <laughs> and you know that well, solved the problem. So look, now there was a book that I read my children that was read to me when I was a kid called "There's a Monster at the End of This Book." Are you familiar with this book, Patrick? terrifying is, the thing yeah. of nightmares yes this, I know that book. this is probably the impetus for your fear is you probably were exactly. reading the book going oh dang there's a monster and then it turns out to be grover and you're like you got Shyamalan, like full twist ending i befriended oh, a monster yeah. get oh, yeah. get the out of my house yeah that makes sense that checks Absolutely. out and this is the beginning of my loving a lifetime twist right <laughs> yeah grover started it all yeah yeah this is all <laughs> okay. grover's fault um, <laughs> So with Riley and uh, and Denise Richards, obviously they're the gasoline blondes. Uh, we see Denise like dumping the gasoline all over Riley, and she's going into her like villain monologue at this point, where she's like, "I don't really know if she says why she's doing it, but she does say that <laughs> Riley's bad at cheerleading." So I'm like, "Okay, at least the movie knows that <laughs> Riley's bad at cheerleading." <laughs> Yes. Sometimes the movie doesn't know. I killed your friends. But and Denise that was, Richards is like that was fun, but yeah. this is about your cheerleading. Yeah, listen, this is personal. I'm I'm mad that I listen. Did I enjoy trying to ruin your life, friends' lives? Yes, but it was, the only reason I did is because you're so bad. Like you're so bad at cheerleading. Like if you were just better <laughs> at cheerleading, great. I wouldn't have to do any of this. But also, she could it was just, the most honest moment. She could just let her not make the team. But then they would have gone back to Chicago, and they would have figured out what. So, so I think Patrick, you might have been a little bit into the wine at this point. Um, but the person yeah, that yeah. that um, did, that they talked to was the wife of the guy who she said committed suicide. So he was having an affair with Denise Richards. Oh, uh, so she and uh, they he, she she news to me news she, to me. <laughs> she somehow made it look like it was suicide. This woman is getting closer to the case. So they moved away from Chicago so that if she did find out um, that, so is that Joe Pesci in on it, does he know? Joe Pesci's not in on okay. it. He's all very shocked by okay. all of this. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so yeah. that, so it, that's why she doesn't want to go back to Chicago because the, the girl is uh, pretty confident that she knows Mallory did and, it. and she's almost gotcha. there be, being able to prove it. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of Joe Pesci, he is like, hey, my daughter is missing. <laughs> and him and Bailey, 
he's like, hey, Bailey, don't you have like a Find My Friend app on your phone or something? And Bailey's like, well, yeah, I do have the Find My Friend app. She pulls it up. She finds Riley. They go and they go to save her. And as they're pulling up, Denise Richards and Riley are like in a brawl, like yeah. rolling around in the dirt on the ground. Yeah. Like, So Denise fighting. Richards had the lighter ready to go. And somehow, despite being tied up, I, this is still a little, but, uh, but Riley was able to stand up and tackle her, which yeah. ca- caused the lighter to go classic. flying. And then they're, they're fighting, mm-hmm. blah, 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 you know. Wow. <laughs> yeah, very classic. Uh, Denise Richards sees the car pull up, and she runs away. And the dad's like, I got you, my daughter, which is fine. And then Denise <laughs> Richards is driving away. She gets pulled over by the police, and she puts her hands up. And she's like, okay, you caught me this time. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> and then the movie ends with a extended cheer routine, and Riley is uh, gets her little rah-rah moment. And she does it. She completes the the four. She she did. She did a great job. And I do just want to say the girl, the trailer captain, she is okay. She has a cast on her leg. She's okay. And she does say this line, which I thought was just beautifully sums up this movie. Riley says to her, I just hope that we can still be friends. And she says, just because your stepmom tried to kill me doesn't mean we can't be friends. <laughs> and I think that's beautiful. I think that's a beautiful hey. lesson because lots of people in her position, if their stepmom tried to kill them, they'd be like, I don't want anything to do with your whole family. I'm all done. But you know what? Yeah. Right. She didn't do that. And I appreciate that. She's, she's bigger than I am. <laughs> that is wild. Yeah. I, I like it. Yeah. It, and hey, you know, lifetime's all, all about friendship and love. Yeah, of course. Just don't drink anything or drive anywhere. And just just to catch everybody up to speed here, the movie is called Killer Cheer Mom. Um, no one dies in this one. And she's not the mom either. She's and she mom. isn't yeah. a cheer. Yeah, and the girl is hard to make the team. None of those words really uh strike a chord. <laughs> The thing about a Lifetime title is it doesn't have to have anything to do with the movie. It just has to be a good title. Uh, yeah. uh, it is a good, a good title. title. And I guess kind of like because she tries to kill someone. I don't know. But no one does die Man. in this one. Nobody dies. No one dies. Right. Right. Okay. So that is the recap. So now we are going to go around the table and we are going to say whether we will pour it up, which means we're into this movie or Dan, for your purposes, based on how we explain the of movie course. to you, no, I've got an would answer. you pour it I up? I got an answer. I'm or good. I'm ready would to you go. put a cork in it? Yeah. All right. So we will start with, I guess, um, Dan, let's start with you. Since I love you, it. You're I, I, the guy, you're guys, the guy. I got to be honest. It could be just me being just completely just washed in a sea of Hallmark, but I'm pouring this up. This is just bonkers. <laughs> like, it it makes little to no sense. The alibi, the only thing worse than the alibi is the motive. The motive for why you would go about torturing these poor women just makes no sense. I can hear what is happening here. Our just center screen was like, I'm done. Yeah. I'm uh, done with this. Too much pink. Yeah. They heard it's that Denise, I. It's Denise, guys. That's right. They heard that I poured she's, it up. She's sabotaging us. And they yeah. were like, no more. I can hear Denise Richards trying to do a Midwestern accent, and it makes me laugh. Just, just the idea of her, like, trying to go about it. Um, Joe Pesci as a father, also a great, <laughs> great bit for me. Bad cheerleading. I will say, I think if you saw this guy, you'd be a little disappointed by Joe Pesci. Really? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, the vibe. It's yes, a vibe for me. It's I appreciated me. the comparison, but uh, a Joe Pesci, I think, was offended somewhere. Well, I'm sure. <laughs> but I think the idea of, of Denise Richards just going ham on folks with little to no motive makes me laugh in general. So I'm pouring it up, guys. Pour it up. Let's do it. Wonderful. <laughs> Bran, what are you thinking? Yeah. I I had a blast with it. I I'm pouring it up. I thought this movie was uh, was a lot of fun. I liked it more than the one that we watched. Uh, what is oh, it? Two, I hated two years the one ago. That we whatever. It was 2018. Three, three years ago. Three years ago. Uh, I liked this a lot more. A lot more fun. Um, I thought Denise Richards was uh, pretty like pretty great in this as the the yeah. woman who's always around the corner. Like I thought she was great. Uh, I thought the girl was fine. She was just, you know, doing her thing, and I thought that was good. Um, and so despite, you know, I, I'm just so conditioned at this point, like I 
the fact that we didn't get like a a, a, a Riley Cooper Connor kiss bums me out. I I think I'm gonna have to get over mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Like and he when said it, it didn't matter. Time, I know, but it matters to me. Yeah. Like I I just conditioned at this point. Yeah, like fair. why even have them get close without a kiss? I don't know. It doesn't. But aside from that, I I loved it. I'm, I'm pouring it all the way up. Big glass for Brand. Big glass all the way up. Wow, all the way up. Here's here's the thing. Here's the thing, Brand. If they did kiss. Then he would have been in on the murders, and he would have been right. uh, sleeping with Denise Richards the uh, whole time. Uh, so which he would have been even more disappointed. Uh, accomplished, accomplished through a kiss is the next week lifetime movie. Yeah. We can't yeah. do that this yeah. week. <laughs> but I mean, not a bad plot twist. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm always ready for a twist. I'm always ready for a twist. So yeah. I am also going to pour it up, and I'll tell you guys hey. why. So here is the thing: unanimous pour it up. For everybody, which is great. So the cheerleader murder movies come out every year. Um, my favorite last year was Identity Theft Cheerleader, uh, where sure. this woman literally was a 30-year-old, like think Josie Grossi, Drew Barrymore, uh, never been kissed, uh, <laughs> except with a cheerleader murderer, <laughs> which was fantastic. Just Man. the best. Um, but this is probably the best that we're going to get of the cheerleader movies this year, I would say. Um, you know, a good storyline. We have a big star, big lifetime money spent on that. And it hits all the tropes. So we have the the cheerleader, um, you know, not being good and her mom kind of helping her. Uh, you know, that mother-daughter relationship is always key to a lifetime movie. And then also all the, like, uh, peeking around the corner, uh, roofing a drink all the type of stuff that you're looking for in a lifetime movie so it hits everything and did it pretty well okay we did it we uh, it's it a up. triple pour up which i it makes for a dangerous night but i mean we're with friends yeah, so absolutely so who are we uh i love it i love it listen if you liked what we did here we're throwing out ideas maybe we'll do like once a week during the holiday season or something like that get in the lifetime world let us know what you think um and uh and we'll go from there i like that i don't want to make any promises yeah but i'd like to do even that. if nothing else just to get to hear patrick describe uh, a movie is like that's you know that's why we pay the big bucks it's, he's it's the a, best in the business it's a it. gift it's a gift um i love it patrick thank you so much for making this happen dan thanks for not watching thank the you. movie so that we could enjoy it and uh may we be the first to wish you a killer cheerleader <laughs> day <laughs> <laughs> the Hallmark is a Bramble Jam podcast recorded live and yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina is produced by Brandon Gray, set decor by Plum Haywood Mall. For more information on all Bramble Jam podcasts, you can go to BrambleJamPodcast.com for more information on how to listen to Deck the Hallmark ad-free. You can go to BrambleJamPlus.com. <laughs>